All right, class, so this is an explanation video for Sapling Chapter 5, question number 18. Uh, and this is a great question. So I really like this question. I would definitely recommend you um, are comfortable with this before you come to class tomorrow for our exam. And this is what we'd really call a collecting gas over water problem. So we are told that we're going to have a 0.478 gram sample of some metal. That metal is going to react with sulfuric acid according to this balanced chemical equation here to generate some H2. That's really the key, right? We're generating H2. It says a volume of 221 milliliters of H2 is collected over water. So that's just like we did in the lab, right? We've got our gas collection tube. We're going to collect it over water. That right there, collected over water, that tells me that I need to think about the vapor pressure of water, right? So that those words right there tell me, in the back of my mind, vapor pressure of water, I'm going to need to take that into account somehow. It says, then the water level in the collecting vessel is the same as the outside level. So I drew a little picture um, to help us figure out what that means. And here we've got collected H2, and it says here the water level is the same. So Basically what that's telling us is that the pressure on the outside is going to be equal to the pressure on the inside. So the atmospheric pressure is the pressure on the outside. So out here, you know, we've got atmospheric pressure sort of pushing down, and that's going to be equal to the total pressure inside of this tube. So this is just a, a way to sort of simplify this problem um, to make it so that we don't have to take into account that column of water uh, like we did in lab. So this is just simplifying the problem a little bit, making it easier for us, a uh, few, few less things to do. Atmospheric pressure is 756 torr. Torr is just another way to say millimeters of mercury, or it's another unit that's the same as millimeters of mercury. So down here, when I you know, organize my information, I just change that right away. And temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the molar mass of the metal. So this is what we're looking for, molar mass of metal. Grams over moles, that's what we're looking for um, for the metal. And we're already given the mass, right? So all we're, all we're really looking for is the number of moles of M and we'll be able to solve for the molar mass. So that's really what we're looking for here. You can see I've tabulated my, or organized my data. So I changed the volume to liters because I know that we'll probably be using PV equals NRT, one of using liters. Temperature, converted that to Kelvin as well. And my pressure I've left in millimeters of mercury for now, and that's because I knew that we'll need to take into account this vapor pressure. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, what is that vapor pressure? Like, you know, in this space up here that I've got collected H2, I've also got, H2O gas, right? I've also got water vapor because it's a water solution. There's water down here. The vapor pressure is going to put some water in there. And I'm going to use this table, right? So I've cut this out. Um, my vapor pressure of water table. So at 25 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure due to water is 23.8 millimeters of mercury. So the way that I'm going to sort of utilize that information is I'm going to say P total inside of the, the gas collection tube. Right? So maybe we'll put this up here so we can follow along with what we're doing. So P total inside the gas collection tube, that's gonna be the pressure of H2 gas plus the pressure of H2O gas. Now in lab, we had another term, right, for the H2O liquid, but in this case, because the water level is the same, we can just ignore that, it just simplifies this problem. So P total equals pH2 plus pH2O, and my P total, that's gonna be this atmospheric pressure because the pressure on the outside is gonna be equal to the pressure on the inside, so P total, will be 756 millimeters of mercury. That's going to equal my pH2 gas, which is what we're looking for, plus 23.8 millimeters of mercury, which is the contribution, right, due to the vapor pressure of water inside of this gas collection tube. If I solve for pH2, so solving for pH2 gas, I ended up with 732.2 millimeters of mercury, which I can then convert to atmospheres because I know I'm going to use the, the ideal gas law, and that's 0 0.963 atmospheres. All right, so now we've got a volume, a temperature, and a pressure for our H2 gas. So I might say if my pressure of H2 times my volume of H2, that's going to give me my moles of H2, and that's really, you know, the key here times my R value, times my temperature, that's gonna be able to be solved for NH2. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in here. All 
solve for NH2, and that is equal to 0 0.00870 moles of H2. And going back up to here, up to the top, I can say, well, if I have this number of moles of H2, I know how many moles of M I had in my reaction, right? It's a one to one ratio. So it's pretty easy for me to say, well, if it's a one to one ratio using the stoichiometry, then my number of moles of H2 equals my moles of M. And if I know my moles of M and I know my grams of M, I can solve for the molecular mass. So the molecular mass is just gonna be mass over moles, and that equals 0 0.478 grams over 0 0.00870 moles, and that equals 54.9 grams per mole, and that should be my final answer.